Replit just changed the entire future of vibe coding with their new design update, and let me tell you what I mean by that. The problem with vibe coding is that anytime you see a website or app that was built by a vibe coding agent, you can instantly tell that it was vibe coded based on the design. And you probably know what I mean. The purple and blue gradients and that ugly font that you see everywhere. But that all just changed with Replit's new design feature that makes your vibe coded apps look like it was designed by a professional designer or agency. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can use Replit's new design feature and three business ideas I think you can actually build with it right now. Let's jump into it. Okay, so when you log into Replit, you will now see their introduction to design. And this is basically a visual only approach to building out the front end without worrying about the back end. So one of the biggest complaints about Replit is how it can basically go off the rails and incur a lot of costs. So if you started building an app and you notice that it's burning a ton of credits and you're spending a bunch of money, it's because it's working on the hardcore stuff in the back end, building out databases and infrastructure and all of that. And this solves that if you just wanna work on design. So with the new design feature, you're able to basically spin up the front end or the design. And then once you have the design that you want, you can then convert it to an actual app. So you're able to unlock the back end features like connectors, databases, and more. So you can actually turn your designs into real functional apps. So to use the new design feature, you'll just click on design and you'll toggle over here. And this is where you're just gonna describe the idea that you want. So for this first example, I wanna go back Back to my roots of when I first started using Replit and building websites for local businesses or basically any service business or business that needs a website. And before all of them were mediocre at best, right? You could spin them up really quickly. You could make changes, but the designs were never great. So that's why I'm super excited for this update. So for this first example, I'm going to have it build me a website for a mobile detailing business. So I'm just gonna say, please design me a sleek, modern, new website for a mobile detailer. And the name of the mobile detailer is called Nick's Mobile Detailing. Perfect, and just for fun, I'm gonna say, make it look like it was designed by Nike's Jordan brand. So you can use design inspiration from basically any brand that you like. So when I think of the Jordan brand, I think of like the zebra prints and the different use of red and black. So I'll just go ahead and send this and I'm going to see what it gives me back. So let's go ahead and click start designing. Now it's been about two minutes and it just finished up here. And I got to say, this design is pretty insane. They clearly took inspiration from the Jordan brand with the black and red. Now, obviously the the letters are, or the font is a little bit off here. So like, this is really hard to read. This is pretty hard to read. So what I wanna do here is I'll just wanna prompt it to basically make the font a little better because I actually love this, uh, this site. Like this design is incredible, right? the packages, all of these are AI generated, but it even got like the Mercedes symbol there. And it even got like, this is a Ferrari. Like it, it's pretty incredible. Like this is, this looks like a website that would be designed by like a high level agency besides, besides the font. So let's just ask it, can you fix this, this font? It's hard to read and fix it in all of the places you're using it on the site. Okay, so now let's see how it does with basically edits or fixes that I ask it to do. Okay, so that took about 30 seconds and it updated. Um, this is definitely easier to read, but I'm not sure that I love this font. So I'm just gonna ask it one more time. Can you change that font to something a little bit more block. Let's see if it understands that. <laughs> that wasn't a very descriptive. I mean, what I should really do is go find a font that I like and say, use this font. But let's just see what it does when I ask for more blocky text. Okay, I actually, uh, I think that's pretty good. I actually really like that. Wow. So this is, I mean, come on. <laughs> like This is incredible. Like this, you nobody can tell this was a vibe coded site no chance it even gave me my packages like 
look how like the you know it has the animations on it like this looks like an agency design site which is incredible and now what i think is incredible as well is you can just press publish here and then let's go ahead and publish to the internet and so now this is actually live online so if we click on this this site is actually live now there's no functionality to it right like uh, when I click on gallery, it doesn't take us anywhere. There's no like actual infrastructure built on the back end. However, this is something that you could actually send to a client and say, what do you think about this design before I do anything else on the website or before I build out any like application functionality, what do you think about this design? And that took us all of what three minutes to have a very professional looking site. I mean, come on, this is, this is insane. So for the next one, I want to design an actual application that could be like a marketplace, right? So uh, that last one was more of just like a service website, but this one I want to build out something that would actually have functionality if we decided to turn it into an actual application. So the idea that I have is actually an idea that I came across from this guy, Sharish on X, and he built this site, Rent My Header, and basically you can turn your Twitter header into passive income. So you can basically rent out your Twitter header to brands and they can pay something like you know $150 a week to put their own ad or their logo on your Twitter header image. I think this is I think this is so genius. I mean, there's so many Twitter users that get a ton of profile visits that they'd rather just make 100, 200 bucks a week than put their own thing there, right? Imagine making passive income literally just by changing your Twitter header. Uh, and of course, as a brand, you're looking for eyeballs and impressions anywhere you can get them. So 150 bucks a week for, you know, call it hundreds of impressions is, uh, it's a pretty good deal. So I just love this idea and no, I don't want to rip it off. But what I thought is that this is something you could also do on LinkedIn. So on LinkedIn, you also have a header image right here. And LinkedIn is sort of known for profile visits, right? Like every time you log into LinkedIn, you usually get a notification that this person viewed your profile. So clearly there's a lot of people viewing profiles, which means those header images are getting impressions. And basically I think you could do the same thing as rent my header for X for LinkedIn. So I want to basically build out the design for a marketplace that would do this. And I want to take inspiration from the biggest online marketplace, or at least one of them, which is Airbnb. So let's go ahead and say, can you build me a design for a marketplace called rent my LinkedIn header image where users can rent out their LinkedIn header image to brands that want to place ads on it? And then let's go to Airbnb. Let's just go ahead and take a screenshot of this and then let's drop it in here and say, please use the Airbnb screenshot attached as design inspiration. Now with that, let's send it. All right. And we're about three minutes in and it just finished cooking this up. Now, I'm not sure that it understood sort of like my business idea, but it definitely understood that I was going for an Airbnb design. So it looks like it is uh, basically, oh wait, no, it totally did understand exactly what I was looking for, right? So it's basically sorting the different types of, I would guess you'd call it influencers or LinkedIn profiles by their occupation. So tech lead at Google with 4.98 stars, 50 K impressions, freelance designer, creative director. So like it's naming off all of these different sort of ICPs that you would want to put your ad on. I mean, this is, this is incredible. And I mean, if you do a side by side comparison with, with Airbnb, I mean, <laughs> that is, that is pretty nuts. Like this is, this is spot on and we're three minutes into this. So I'm excited about this. Like it even has down to like the, you know, you can favorite this, include everything, include all fees before and after taxes. Like probably wouldn't need that for this, but you know, it's super relevant on Airbnb, but this is so cool. Obviously these would be images of like, you know, maybe the actual profile of the person you'd want to buy an ad on their LinkedIn, but like, I'm super impressed with this. Now coming to the last application that I want to build here is something that has a lot of functionality. It would require API access. 
but I think you could build something that looks really cool. So this last idea that I have here is basically an idea based off of what's going on with all of the rage around prediction markets right now. So if you haven't been following, there's tools like Calshi and Polymarket and now Robinhood that are all offering prediction markets where you can essentially bet or wager on the chances of something happening. So whether that be sports games or political winners or even the price of Bitcoin by a certain date. And what I found is that there's actually arbitrage opportunities where there's misalignments in the odds between the different marketplaces. So for instance, if the chances of the New England Patriots winning are 61% on Calshi, but they're 72% on Poly Market, there's actually an arbitrage there to buy both sides on the markets and basically make up the percentage points in the middle. So to show you exactly what I'm talking about, I found this, this website called getarbitragebets.com and see there's a 7% profit on this game right here. Let's pull up the calculator. So basically, um, on Calshi, you can buy the Atlanta Hawks winning for $79.57. Uh-oh. When you pull it up, uh, it tells you the breakdown of it, but it disappears really quickly. So I went ahead and took a screenshot. So in this example, you can see that if you invested $100 and basically bought these two positions on Calshi and Polymarket, no matter what, no matter who won, you would end up with a 6% return. And that's because you could basically wager on both the Atlanta Hawks and the New Orleans Pelicans to win it. And so when one loses, you, there's basically a spread in there. I won't get into all the details of like exactly how it works, but as you can see on the screenshot, um, if you can find that arbitrage between the two markets, you can make a profit no matter who wins. But Nobody has time to do that manually. And because these markets change so quickly, there's really no way that a human's gonna find that. And that's why we need to rely on tech. So the idea here is to basically grab the API from both the markets and have an agent constantly watching for any arbitrages that are happening and hopefully execute automatically so that you can get in while there's a mix match on those two markets. So for this example, I'm gonna say, can you design me an app that finds arbitrages between the different prediction markets? I want it to be minimal and sleek. And instead of just relying on those minimal instructions that I gave it to be minimal and sleek, you can come over to dribble.com and you can find design examples from some of the world's top designers. So rather than trying to think of how to describe a design myself, I can just go find designs that I love. So let's go look at let's say product design and let's just scroll through here. This one looks pretty cool. Okay, awesome. So this looks like some sort of like financial app and I really like the colors and just the overall design. So let's go ahead and take a screenshot of that and put it in here and say, please use the screenshot attached as a design inspiration. And with that, we send it. Okay, and it says we're about two minutes in now. And I mean, it designed exactly like the example that I gave it. So let's go ahead and look at the design. And so this is the design that we gave it. And here's the design it came up with. So, I mean, that is extremely close. Now it didn't do the white here, um, but it basically included all of the features. Now, I'm not exactly sure how it would find, like how it would display the arbitrage opportunities, and that's okay because I didn't really like tell it how I wanted that information displayed, but I mean, total portfolio value, profit distribution, active positions, active, uh, oh, top arbitrage opportunities. Okay, so this is exactly how it would do it. Wow, it even found Polymarket and Calshi. Like I didn't tell it any of that right? Betfair, I guess these are some other ones. But yeah, it's basically saying, hey, there's a 4% spread here. Profit would be 8.2% trade. And ideally, you could just click on that. It would automatically buy those two positions. And, and just like that, you'd have an 8% gain from clicking a button all automated. So 
That's a wrap on this video. Thank you to Replit for supporting the channel. This update is insane and I will definitely be building a whole lot of stuff with it. So drop a comment below and let me know what you're gonna build with this new design feature. I wanna hear from you and as always, I appreciate you 